How many of you guys out there uh, consider yourself, let me see a show of hands, who considers himself evil? We got some evil peeps here? Wow. That's good. Look around. Don't just raise your hand in the front row. Like, look around. I want you to see. You guys, the evil peeps should recognize each other. Wow. Who, who here considers themselves, like, not evil whatsoever and is just here just to, you know, see the other side, get a little leg up? You know that, Avery, you had your hand up for both of those. <laughs> this little girl, she's sitting here and she's had her hand up the whole time like this. I'm gonna remember that. I'm gonna remember you voted for both, okay? <laughs> All right, just saying, it doesn't work that way. All right, so um, first off, to get started, come on, join us. Uh, I'd like to tell you guys a little bit about myself, show you some of the stuff that I've done because I definitely don't come in with the expectation you know any of the work I've done, so it's always good to know where I'm coming from. Uh, my name's Keith Silverstein. I have been doing voiceover for I don't know, somewhere between 15 and 20 years now. Um, it makes me feel old every time I think about it, but there you have it. What are you going to do? Um, and I play all kinds of different characters, but I seem to play a lot of evil characters. Now, before I go any further, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's play some clips of some stuff, which hopefully you'll be able to hear. Sweet. Okay, so there's a couple of things so you get an idea. Thank you. I appreciate it. Now i got to pay you. No, come on, guys. That's, I don't, there's no reason. I just wanted to... It's not... Right. No, sit down in the back. There's no reason. Everybody, no one was standing. I'm just kidding. Even in the very back, they went. <laughs> Which is awesome. That's great. So convincing. I dig it. Um, so, like I said, I played a, a large variety of different characters. There's goofy stuff and, you know, and lots of dads. And some dads are evil dads, in fact. Um, but I play a lot of villains. I mean, if you had to put it into a, a one thing, a, a lot of my characters have been villains. So... That's what we're going to talk about today, is we're going to talk about the villains. Um, let's talk about evil first off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got evil here. I can't know if I can even read this from over here. But you can see there, uh, it says evil, profoundly immoral, and uh, malevolent. I can't read it from this far. Uh, wicked, bad, wrong, immoral. You guys read that? Thanks. Dishonorable, corrupt, <laughs> depraved. Reparable. So there, there's a lot of uh, villainous. As you can see, the point is, there's not just evil. It's not just like one thing. It's a lot of things. Now, to be an evil character, you don't necessarily have to be all of those different types of things. And you can never just play evil. It's, it's kind of a rare thing where you get a character and they say, hey, we just want you to play evil and that's it. So let's, let's talk about why there are different shades of evil real quickly. I'm going to use you guys' uh, show of hands. Um, how many of you here think it's wrong? And don't overthink this, by the way, okay? Just... On first, go with your first gut instinct. How many of you in this room think it's hard to, it's wrong to kill? Raise your hand, show of hands. Don't overthink it, just who thinks it's wrong to kill? It's pretty simple. Look around a little bit just so you get an idea. Okay, who, who, to be careful around. <laughs> no, there's more to that than that. Okay, well let's say, okay, now you saw that. How many of you uh, then think the, uh, the death penalty is wrong? Show of hands. Look around, just so you see. I mean, I, I'm, I'm in that boat, but I'm just saying, I, it's not to judge each other, so that's not, that's not, that's why I say your first instinct of it. But you see the big difference? You guys, almost overwhelmingly, almost all of you just said, straight up, it's wrong to kill. And then the number dropped way down when I said, well, what about the death penalty, right? And you guys were like, oh, well, that's cool. <laughs> but that's important, and that's not to show that you guys are inconsistent or there's something wrong. You're just a sampling of, of the world, basically. Um, so there's nothing wrong with that, but what that shows is that once you throw circumstances into it, suddenly it's like, oh, how many of you guys think it's wrong to, to kill animals, to eat, to eat meat? We could, if you, right. <laughs> right, thank you. Thanks. Uh, she's like, meat, I know that word. I know that word. Um, so there's a few people, and that's true. That's a true sampling of that, too. All right, so um, let's just say your, your family is in peril. Um, somebody broke in your house or something, they've got somebody in your family in their hands and it looks like they're gonna do away with this person um, and you have a gun in your hand and you can fire that shot in that case how many people think that that would be wrong and you wouldn't choose to who thinks that would be wrong then to kill in that situation which is okay too you mean kill, and defense. kill and defense but i'm saying even defend your own time. okay so a couple there's usually a couple but you see the big difference there like you say straight up who, who says wrong to kill everybody's like yeah it's totally wrong oh but that's fine though yeah that's cool i like meat oh with the family's in danger so, so we all have different shades of everything. So in different situations, we're all capable of different things is what I'm saying for the most part. Um, so that's very important. And when you're playing a character, evil is very similar to that. There are different shades. Because is that person who makes that choice to kill evil? 
Well, I don't know. You guys just, a lot of you said the death penalty was all right. Well, somebody's got to carry that off, right? So does that make that person evil? No, they're just doing their job, right? So the first one I want to talk about is I want to talk about evil characters who uh, have purposefully chosen the wrong path and enjoy causing pain and destruction. This category, would these would be the ones that are the most, I guess, evil, just by basic description. Now, frequently these are monsters, demons, uh, they can be henchmen, uh, people who find someone, usually who gives them a greater purpose for their wrongdoings. People who already like to be evil and do bad things. Now, usually this is not gonna be the main antagonist, like the main villain, because it's usually not as interesting of a story arc, someone who just likes to hurt people. Um, it can be though, and you can always break any rule. So um, I did something, I played a character that was like this in a movie called Straight Jacket. And this character, I'm gonna actually show you the entire life of this character. Uh, so, spoiler alert, he's gonna die. <laughs> oh man, he ruined it. Um, messed it up. Yeah, it's, 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 super, it's not super long or anything, but check this out. This is a character that just enjoys hurting. Cover the little girl's eyes. There you go. Now, now, as you can see from that clip, there, there's not that much to that character. He's pretty straightforward. He serves a great purpose. I mean, like, you know, all this raining down death and destruction. I mean, that's awesome. That's cool. But I mean, can you, can you watch like two hours of that? You know what I mean? There's nothing deep about him. There's nothing. If there is, we didn't see it. If there's anything deep about that, that mo you're absolutely right. That motivation is not that deep a motivation. I mean, you can still make an interesting character because maybe they enjoy it but not as overtly, you know, it's a little more subtle than every now and then, which makes it a little more interesting. This one looks like he would never chill out. Like if you get near him, you're just, that's it. He's gonna take you out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, now here's another, I got another clip for you. There's another series I worked on. This is on Netflix now. You guys can check this out. It's a show called Glitter Force. Different characters, which is, a, this is a really rare thing. I actually love this show for this uh, reason. It was so cool to work on. Um, then let me play three of the villains. I don't know how that worked out. It'll probably never happen again, but I had so much fun working on it. And it, basically without ruining the show for you or whatever, as far as you know for all this show, these characters just love doing wrong. They're just storybook characters that are just evil. So the good girls, they're good, and they want a happy ending for everything. They want everything to be like, yay, everything's great. And these guys just want a bad ending. That's their whole thing, is if they can get enough negativity in the world, they can awaken their master emperor Nobo. So that's their whole point. So here's a clip. Uh, let me show you my characters first. I got them lined up. So I think those guys fit in the same type of category, although they're not just maniacal running around constantly. They enjoy, but they plan out their attacks. You know what I mean? They're not constantly running around killing and destroying everyone. So they're a little more interesting to watch. And of course, they're fun because they're kind of bumbling and they compete against each other and they're always arguing. So I mean, you know, that just makes it fun. So it's a goofier version kind of of that same type of character. So a much more common type of villain, at least in my career, is a character that has wronged at some point in their past. And uh, sometimes this is a character that might have gone on to do great things, might even have been a hero, had it not been for something that forced them off of the right path. Now, a good example of that is from the world of Bleach. I was uh, fortunate enough to uh, play the main antagonist in the second Bleach movie, it's called Diamond Dust Rebellion, and his name was Sochiro Kusaka. And he was good friends with uh, the main character, Toshiro Hitsugaya. And uh, the deal here is they both studied to become members of the uh, Soul Society but somehow they both managed to uh, manifest the exact same spiritual weapon. So basically when you get to a certain point in your training, you just are good enough to manifest a spiritual weapon and that's your power, that's your ability you have. And these guys just had the same one. Well, that's forbidden, even though they had no choice over it whatsoever and they were good friends. And so the Soul Society forced them to fight each other and the loser, which ended up being Kusaka, is put to death. Okay, so totally not fair. Right? It's not his fault. These guys are good friends. And the Soul Society are basically supposed to be the good guys. 
So because of a technicality, one of these two friends has to die. So the interesting thing about that is most of us can watch that and we can get behind that. So we can sympathize with this character because we understand like, oh, that sucks, man. I get why you're mad. Now it's the world of Bleach. So what happens is of course he comes back after being killed as a hollow with his abilities and wants to exact his revenge. Now it's very different than just enjoying causing evil. So I don't play him as just evil. I don't play him. He may relish a moment or two, but it's because he's getting his revenge. It's not because he likes causing, at least that's the way I took this character. Um, it's not because he just likes doing that. So, and I think it makes him a lot more interesting. So here's a clip, uh, spoiler, it's towards the ending, but you know, bad guys always lose, almost always. Uh, so the thing I wanna point out about that, uh, which is interesting, is this is another evil character perishing at the end of the, of the story. Um, now you see the way it was treated very differently than the big creature that uh, was all about the red butts. Right, that was ripping people's heads off and stuff. I mean, you can even just see the way that it's done. You're happy, I mean, everything, the music, everything builds so that you want that guy to be taken out. You're like, yeah, the good guy finally took him out. You're gonna feel something if you've watched this movie and then you watch this sequence, because it's not, it's just not the kind of villain that you're like, hell yeah, he's dead, woo! Even though you're rooting for the good guys, it's kind of a bittersweet, like, yeah, that sucked, man, he had to go because he was gonna take out the good guys. Yeah, so you feel for that guy. It's a much more interesting character, and there is a, a character arc to follow in that. Um, and I, I play many more characters like that, and I think it's a, it's a more common way to go, at least for a lead villain. So um, when is a villain not a villain? Anybody got a guess? When he's not the villain. Okay, when he's not the villain. Anyone else? I mean, there's lots of, of answers, but I'm just, if anybody's got any other ideas, what do you got? Sure, it could be back and forth, like an anti-hero, like a vigilante or something. That can be, sometimes it could be a vigilante. Uh, the most obvious example, I think, is when a, a good character is under uh, mind control, right? Because uh, you could have a good character being controlled all through a movie or possessed or something, doing all kinds of bad stuff. Um, but there are characters that fall into this category, too. So let's, uh, if the character doesn't necessarily have to be controlled for it to be that same kind of situation. It can be a type of control, but not quite that. Now, I'll show you an example here. Emotionally abused by his clan and treated like an animal, literally slept in a cage. Uh, his clan was then completely wiped out in the battle and he became the last of his people and he wanders off into the wilderness, uh, most likely to, to perish. I mean, he's a kid out in the wilderness. But salvation came in the very unlikely form of this gentleman. <laughs> or uh, some of you know him, huh? I see. Yeah. Now I have, yeah. So now Lord Orochimaru uh, may very well have had ulterior motives for giving uh, this guy a home. But, and here, let me show you how he looks as an adult. There we go. Um, but as far as Kimimaru is concerned, this guy came and found him and gave him a home and clothed him and, and bathed him and gave him a purpose and gave him a roof over his head and took care of him and saved his life, basically. So the interesting thing about Kimimaru is I never played him as evil. He's a bad guy. He's definitely a villain in it, but everything he's doing, he's doing out of loyalty and honor because he owes Lord Orochimaru. A dark knight. He owes him, yeah. So he's, 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 in a way, he still falls in that category of a bad guy and a villain. This is why you can't just say, oh, he's evil. Because he's not. And if I played him as like, <laughs> it would have been wrong. It would have been totally wrong. So I did my best to play him as just very loyal and with lots of honor. He's just misguided because he's not looking at the big picture. I, uh, I wish they would do a dance game and have him. I just like that he's already one of his things that's like, Bracken Dance. Just think one of those dance video games would be fantastic to do a Naruto spin off of, but it'll probably never happen. But, uh, but you, whoever's watching now, get on that. Make that happen. He's an anti villain of sorts. But he's still, I mean, in general, he would fall under that category of a villain and a bad guy. So the most common, anybody know? I mean, I know what I think for sure the most common uh, motivation for villain is. Quest for power. power, I think. And sometimes that's in the place of money. I mean, money is power. Um, but that's the most common thing that we have is a quest for power. Characters like Megatron and Cobra Commander, Steve Skeletor, all these characters we know, they're all in quest for power. And sometimes their subordinates are bit players on the same, same team. Um, and what makes them bad is that they believe that the, you know, the ends justify the means. And they have no problem breaking the rules to achieve their goals. You know, they just want to be in charge, they just, they don't want to go the right way to do it. What's the quickest, fastest way to get there and have total power? So I've gone down this path with a lot of characters. Yeah, that's what happens. That's what happens when you have too much power, guys. So be careful!
All right, I don't wanna see that happen to any of you guys, all right? I think we've built up a bond so far. All right, so I'm gonna talk about another type of villain here, but I wanna first off, you guys know Disney movies, right? Mm -hmm. Familiar with a couple, maybe? Probably a lot. Uh, who do you guys think is the most evil uh, Disney villain? Jafar. Grilled Polo, Jafar. Darth Vader? Sure, you're gonna play that little Disney card. This year. <laughs> you just wanted to show off that you know that. Oh, you didn't expect that. Who else? The Horned King? Who else? Maleficent. Maleficent. Well, it's up to, you know, what you think. Mickley, you're pulling the cool ones out over here. Isn't that from, isn't that from uh, Rescuers Down Under 2? Like, or no, Down Under. It would be one. There's only one. Rescuers, Rescuers Down Under. See, that's, I'm impressed. Um, so here's the thing. Most Disney villains are like, I want to be the prettiest, or I want to marry the prince, or I'm going to take your voice. Um, most Disney villains are not even like, I'm going to take over the world. Now, you actually said the one that I think is the most evil, and that's Frollo. Frollo is the villain from The Hunchback. Oh, yeah. Now, does anybody remember what Frollo wanted to do? Genocide. <laughs> Genocide, yes! He wanted to kill all the gypsies. Not like, keep them down. Like, he wanted them all to die. He was racist. He was, yeah, yeah. Racist, xenophobic, I mean, that actual hatred of an entire type of people compared to the other ones, I think. I mean, you're enti everybody's entitled to their opinions, of course. There's no like def definitive, like, Disney says this is the worst. I know it's not Pete, though. I know it's not Pete from, like, Mickey Mouse. That's not the worst villain. <laughs> you want to know what the irony is? Is what? They made him so evil so that he wouldn't be popular among the Disney villains. They wanted someone everyone would hate. They wanted to make sure, well, they did it. They did a good job with that one, for sure. And ironically, that made him one of the most popular. See, see I, I never see people dressed up as, I never see like people dressed as Frollo. I mean, I'm not saying people don't like Frollo, I'm just saying don't people don't like it. Frollo. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, the next type of villain is the one that's motivated by uh, hatred. You know, like an explorer that hates Native Americans or what have you. Um, that's pretty, that's pretty bad. And I, I played a character similar to this in a movie called, uh, Monster High Escape from Skull Shores. Uh, this guy's name was, uh, it's not Disney, no, but I've been very nice Disney. Bartleby Farnham. And his deal was, uh, it was a little bit of, and you'll notice this too, there's a sprinkling of other types in, like a lot of villains don't only fall in one category. He obviously also wants money is part of his motivation and power, but... He feels that these monsters, these freaks, are worthless and can be controlled and can be, he can make money using them and they shouldn't have any choice. Um, and that's very, very clear. So let's take a look at a little bit of this. Aaron Fitzgerald rocking it, she's great. Um, so <clears throat> another type of villain, this is a very different one, a little off the beaten path here. The deranged psychopath or sociopath. You'll like this. Johan Levy, or regret, or fear, or have any conscience whatsoever. And he uses this, he's very smart, he uses this to his great advantage. I mean, think about it, because most of us have a line that we won't cross, right? What? Right, we all have a line at some point, point. something we're like, well, I wouldn't do that to get what I want. I mean, it's like, take a silly, ridiculous example, but uh, you know, say you're, well, he's a girl in this situation, a girl and your, your girlfriend's boyfriend is hot and you want to be with him. And well, the quickest, easiest way would be just to kill her, right? <laughs> No, but I'm saying if you want to guarantee you split him up, right? I mean, that's pretty straight. But, but most of us, it's a surefire way to split him up. He's not going to be like, well, I'm going to stay celibate forever now in her memory. Because he's a guy. <laughs> so, I mean, that's the, that's the quickest way to do it, basically. So, if you don't have that limitation and you're either willing to do that yourself or trick someone else into doing it. It's the most surefire way to mess, so you're not messing with the, oh, they're getting back together, they made up, whatever, whatever. That's not the situation in the show, folks. Let me not mislead you. But just to show you, most of us would be like, okay, maybe I'd flirt with him, but I'm not gonna do anything other than that. Because we have these lines that were like, I wouldn't do that to a friend, I wouldn't, do, I wouldn't kill somebody, I wouldn't. That's a good line, by the way, that not killing somebody line. Don't, don't cross that, folks, don't do it. Johan's case, the question should be, what lie? Exactly. No, he doesn't. But he, but he knows other people have these lines and stuff. And, and uh, so he doesn't have a conscious telling him what he can and can't do. He likes to manipulate those around him. Um, but I think for him, like, the indifference that he has to it is the worst kind of evil. 
Uh, just a little bit, I think this scene will show a little bit of this character, but it makes him really interesting. He, uh, it's a great show, and this is not, this actually won't ruin anything, it's like a 74 episode show, I think, and this is towards the beginning, it's kind of the setup of the show. And uh, there's a main doctor who chooses, instead of saving a diplomat, rescuing a diplomat in an operation, he saves this little kid he wants to save. Um, and that's a choice he makes, even though his bosses are like, you are not, you're our best doctor, you basically are gonna save this diplomat because that's high profile. And he's like, I'm gonna save this little kid who's in a much worse situation. And the problem with that is, this little kid is not, an, he doesn't know this, but this little kid is a bad, this is Johan, and he is not good. He's already pure evil at this point. Um, and he's not gonna grow up and change at all. And uh, he's very indifferent, and, and, and you'll see in this clip, he kind of overhears the doctor who's very angry when he's kind of out of it in a, I don't know if he's in a coma, but he's, he's under, he's the unconscious, he, the doctor thinks. And the doctor's angry, and he's kind of wishing that all these people were dead. Just to himself, really, you know, not really wishing it were true, but Johan takes it literally. So this is years after that has happened, you'll see some in flashbacks. But you'll see how indifferent he See the sweat dripping off his brow after he killed that guy? No, he didn't, because there was none. He was totally chill. I like somebody who's like, yeah, yeah, it's all that. <laughs> <laughs> I hypnotized you. Um, yeah, that's crazy, man. I mean, he just walks, he walks so calmly after that, like no big deal, and is so sure of himself that he did the right thing. It's just, it's kooky. So, one last character. Uh, fits a kind of an odd category. I haven't seen the whole series. And I don't know the entire story, so I can only speak from what I know about him so far. Um, but yeah, but this guy, my boy here, Hisoka. Uh, oh. Any of you guys watching Hunter x Hunter? Yeah. You know the series a little bit? So this is a weird cat, man. This guy's, this guy's a trip. Um, and he's likable, but he's weird. He, um, he seems to enjoy a good fight the exact same way a sex addict would enjoy sex. <laughs> no, I mean literally. <laughs> like, he can be patient and he can wait for a good challenge. So there are characters in this that show a lot of potentials. There's a couple of main characters who are, who are young boys, and so this is weird, because I'm telling you this because people are like, dude, he's like coming onto that little boy, and it's not really what's happening in the scene, but it looks like that. If you see a little clip, you're like, oh, this is a freaky series, and it is, but, but the deal is that he sees this potential in these people, and he doesn't want to fight him now because he, he would rather wait for that good fight. So he can be patient, but at the same time, Every once in a while, from what I've seen so far, he just loses it and has to have a quickie. And he won't waste that on, I'm serious, this is the best way I can describe this. He won't waste it on somebody who's got a ton of potential that he wants to train for another four years to be good enough to actually give him that real battle. Um, so every once in a while he kind of freaks out, he has like a bloodlust, and that's a perfect word for it because it's like the most literal interpretation of blood. We all know that term, oh, like yeah. you're just lusting for blood, I need blood, I need blood. It like literally is both lust and blood. It's a bloodlust for this guy, like he's got to do it. Um, also, he's very creepy because he dresses kind of like a clown. <laughs> so there's this look to it. Um, so let's take, let's take a look at this guy. That's in the clip, yeah. Uh, yeah, so he's a trippy guy. So you saw he almost lost control there for a minute and almost took this guy out. He saw the potential in going and was like, uh, oh, whoops. Well, they did. An interesting thing on this guy, too. I mean, even his, when I got the audition for this guy, like, they said he was very effeminate. First off, was part of his character. So the first thing I thought is to, you know, to go a little higher and have a little, you know, you know kind of thing going on in my voice. And, uh, but it was very clear they wanted him, like, deep. So I actually kind of made him like literally like the somewhat of like the embod embodiment of like an orgasm. He literally, his voice is, oh, oh. <laughs> but I'm saying like it's smooth because he's confident too. So you know what I mean? But I mean, honestly, he really literally lives in this voice. You know what I mean? He lives in that like constant orgasm. Not every moment is a thing, but, but that's, that's part of how I came with his, uh, the character voice for him. So, um, so you can see there's a whole lot of different types of evil, and you can't play just one evil. So what I want to do, I want to make sure we have time for, uh, I'm happy to take some questions too, but I also want to make sure, let's take a couple questions, and then I want to do, you guys want to, I'm going to have a prize to give out. If you guys, we have some volunteers who might want to do something for a prize. Yeah. I mean, if nobody wants a prize, I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay, so let's do a couple, uh, let's do a, uh, just a couple quick Q&A if we can. Yeah, you can turn the lights up, that's cool. We don't have to be as, as evil for this. Um, <laughs> So any, any questions? Anybody got any questions they want to throw out real quick? All the way in the back there with the hat. Yeah. So, you know, so the hat is, so to be truly evil, you have to be truly self-aware. So, the truth, so do you think the truly evil 
Mm, interesting. You mean in terms of like, because if you're self-aware that you're evil, like that you're doing bad things, you're truly evil. Yeah, it's a very, it's a very interesting way to look at it, and I agree, I think for the most part. Um, that's another distinction too, is does your character know and think that they're evil? Because a lot of people, remember I was giving you examples of dying, of different deaths, like, and some are okay? Well, those of you that said death penalty is okay probably weren't thinking, I am evil. You were, that was just your opinion in a situation. So you don't have that self-aware. So it's like, are all the real evil characters the ones that are like, I know what I'm doing is bad? My point is the villains, a lot of these could be described as being evil in one way or another uh, by a lot of people. And there's lots of different ways they can be. And some, in, the, in my situation, some were not self-aware and some were self-aware. Um, and uh, they're all different. It's nice different shades to paint with. So it's a lot of fun. Okay, question over there, hat over there. No, it's fine. Does a non synthetic villain have to be so lovable just the way how good the intentions are? I'm sorry, so they get a non synthetic? Yes, a non synthetic villain can be lovable if they have really, really, really great intentions for their own. They have good intentions, yeah. Well, any character can be loved. We all love a lot of villains, right? I mean, no matter how evil. But I think the most interesting villains are the ones, like, look at, like, like Darth Vader. People love Darth Vader, right? But even. I mean, when we first meet Darth Vader, you know what I mean, when we're watching A New Hope, um, he's just straight evil. There's nothing more to that character. He's just evil. But as we get to go, we start to realize he has a past as we're watching more movies, and we get to know where he came from. And by the time you get to, sorry guys, if you haven't seen it by now, you know, Luke, I'm your father. <laughs> You're like, what? There's totally more backstory here! And that's what makes him so likable and so interesting. So the ones that are just straight, like I've, I'm evil, I've always been evil, I'm bad, I just like to do bad things, are generally, and I say generally because it depends on the writing and the show and everything, just not as interesting. You have less to work with because if you're using them constantly, it's gonna get boring at some point. You know what I mean? Or it could, it has the potential to, so you gotta be really careful. Any other questions? Yeah, right here. Uh, is there ever a Marvel or DC villain you would like to have a crack at voicing? I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, comic characters. Uh, I like DC. I'm a particular fan of, of Marvel. Um, I, I'm happy anytime, but really, like, I'm a big Daredevil fan. It's not a villain, but, uh, but I get, Daredevil's, like, one of my favorite characters. I grew up on, like, Daredevil, Spider-Man, Hulk. Like, it was my three top. I mean, like, uh, lots of other stuff, but those are my three top. Like, I collected the books and that I was really into. So uh, anybody, and if it wasn't Daredevil, but if it was in the Daredevil universe, like if I had to play Bullseye or something, you know what I mean, like that'd be great. Um, mm -hmm. But I'll take anything. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Um, so what would you say is the hardest uh, role that you've had? I, you know, roles are, are difficult for, uh, for different reasons. Um, uh, physically, like, yeah, yeah, some of them can be physically difficult to do. Um, Johan from Monster was interesting because uh, I like to joke around a lot in between takes, and with most even villains and evil characters, I can be that character, I mean, especially like something like Glitter Force. So when I'm like, well, the master is doing this and that and the other thing, and we, and then we kind of like go, that was how I don't think I can go right back and I'm fine with all those characters and stuff. Um, but Johan was so, a lot of it was very internal, um, and it was quieter. So when I was, it's you, Doctor. You were the one. It was more than just a voice. Like, I really would kind of get into character and have and get kind of focused and kind of, like, really think evil stuff before. So, but I mean, I really did. I really did. Um, and so I had to tell the director, Patrick Seitz, I had to be like, you know what, I, I don't want you to think I'm in a bad mood or, like, this is not going well or anything, but I'm going to kind of chill in between takes a little bit. Just, it didn't feel right. It was, it was a little harder because it was a, a real, it was an energy thing. Like to make my energy go where it naturally is here and then to really come down really quickly. Uh, so that was hard in that way. Um, I don't know, some of these things are different. The Bartleby Farnham uh, from Monster High, like I really put a lot into that character. That was original animation, meaning I just had the script in front of me. I wasn't matching lip flap or doing anything like that. So I got to really create. Um, and I, I really wanted that to be so good. So I really pushed myself and the director helped really push me on that. So I mean, and I'm glad because I'm really happy with the results afterwards. But you know what I mean? So they're different in different ways. Like I remember I was, I was like, like sweating and stuff when we were doing that and everything. Um, uh, so yeah, so uh, they're all different. You know what I mean? They're, they're different in different ways. Uh, but you mean hard. So I mean, those are hard in those kind of ways, I guess. So any other uh, questions? Yes. It might be terribly cliche to ask, but could we hear your best evil laugh? 
Ah, uh, well, well, the only problem with that is like my best evil laugh. <laughs> like, I mean, probably I'm not going to do my best evil laugh right this moment. But you've got, you know, I know I shouldn't do this right, but that's right. I'll start doing this right now anyway. You've got your like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you've got those kinds, right? You've got your... <laughs> More Joker style. <laughs> you've got those. Um, you've got crew where it goes even more, I guess. There's so many. It's like, it's, it just depends on what there is for it. I like to build to them if I can. But you do have the ones that just go... <laughs> So it depends what uh, what you're gonna. <laughs> How did Torbs get in there? He's not here. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, there's so many, and I do I do enjoy that. I do like to create it. If I have a character and I have an opportunity to kind of create a, for me, I mean, I don't mean an original laugh. No one's ever done in the world because how would you even know you did that? But um, but I like to, if I can, be like, oh, cool. What if he, you know, try stuff out on directors and hopefully they're like, okay, cool. Because we've heard so many evil laughs. A uh, funny thing about evil laughs is I know there's always this debate like with anime, like the subs versus the dubs and, you know, we the original. And look, I like it both and whatever you want to watch is, is fine with me. I don't have a problem with it. But it's hard to judge another language if you don't know it. It's kind of funny. So when people are like, the acting's better than Japanese, I'm like, do you speak Japanese? And usually they're like, no. And it's like, well, how do you know? Like, if I had the energy, the passion, and I was like, I think that we should be together in English. If you don't speak English, you're going to be like, dude, that was so passionate, man. That was so much better. It was so much better than Japanese. But you speak English, so you're like, that sucked, man. That was like the worst, like, Shatner-esque, like, pauses ever. The emphasis was wrong. So I'm saying it's really difficult to, like, judge that anyway. And one of the things I've been really obvious, because we're talking about laughs, is I've done a lot of shows, anime shows, where they play the big monster or the bad guy, and I hear the original Japanese laugh, and this is very common. Oh, 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 oh. Super common. And to me, now, I... The culture, it's a different culture, so I'm not saying that sucks, but I'm saying for me to just repeat that exactly, it would not be accepted by, uh, by the English-speaking community as a whole. They'd be like, that sucks. <laughs> now, it may, it may work in Japan, and that, because it's different, you know what I mean? It's, it's totally different, it's different cultures. Um, but so it's kind of funny when people say that, because he's laughs, and then I go like, uh, you don't want me to do that, right? They're like, no. I'm like, cool, <laughs> awesome, thank you, because I don't want to do that. <laughs> All right, so let me, get, uh, let me get some volunteers. Put your hand up if you want to volunteer. Yeah, I do have a prize, good. Uh, come on up, your first one up, cool, come on up too. I'm only gonna take a few people, so come on up over here. Uh, come on up, come on up, come on up. Uh, what do we got so far? Come on up. We got four so far. Okay, lady. Yes, we need some more ladies. Come on up. Up to the three, four, five. Yeah, you can come all the way up here. Let's go. Uh, is that enough? I don't. We only have a little bit of time, so I'm gonna cut it off. I'm gonna cut it off at that. And uh, all right, guys. Here's what we're gonna do. You mentioned. Uh, Evil, you actually mentioned evil ass. That's why you guys are up here. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Y'all are gonna do some evil ass, baby! That's right, now listen, I need you guys too because I'm not gonna be the jerk. I'm not gonna be the one like, you suck, you win, yeah. So we're gonna, you guys pay attention because you're gonna vote. We're gonna do the old this thing and you guys are gonna applaud. So I'm gonna need your help with that. So let's bust this out because we've only got so much time. Tell everybody your name real quick. My name is David. Let's hear it for David real quick. All right. David, I don't care what kind you do, any, we're not judging the style of evil laugh, but let's hear your best evil laugh. Go ahead, take the mic when you're ready. <laughs> cool. Very well done, I like it, you committed, that's good. All right, tell everybody your name, please. Uh, JT. All right, it's here for JT. Very brave. All right, JT, whatever style you want, you be a warlock or a witch or an evil scientist, I don't care. Hook it up. <laughs> very nice, very nice. All right, tell me what your name please. Uh, Kevin. This is Kevin. Super <laughs> Kevin. I love that. So many people, when they get on the mic and stuff, you're like, hey, tell me what your name like, uh, Kevin. That gets that every time, you get me on the streets like, uh, oh, Kevin. It's, like, it's Kevin. Uh, all right, so, Kevin, um, hook us up. Give us your best evil laugh. Okay. When you're ready. Yeah! <laughs> Short and sweet, man. 
and they ask for those too, man. Those are like the big dudes sometimes that are just like ready to fight. Just, oh! <laughs> Real big, I like it, it's good. All right, tell them your name, please. All right, my name is Mia. <laughs> All right, Mia. <laughs> Did I go too long? <laughs> that was perfect. Yes, yeah. Uh, let's hear your, uh, now that you said your name, and you did that, I want to hear what your evil laugh is. Let's just do it. Well, I feel like there's a bit of pressure on me considering uh, 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 uh. <laughs> You did that to yourself. <laughs> 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 you shouldn't be off the stage. Get up here. We want you up here. So don't fall off. Don't fall off. All right. Here, let me move, let me move with my fist back here. Okay. All right. Tell everybody your name. Brian. This is Brian, everybody. Let's hear it for Brian. <laughs> you know what I about that? That had, like, unbridled joy at the top. Like, this could have been like, we are going clubbing at the beginning, right? It was like, <laughs> but then it was like, <laughs> at the end, it was cool. It had a lot of personality. That's not to sway your boat, because whatever you like, they're all cool. But sometimes it's a little something different. And the truth is, hearing something a little different, for me, is cool. So I really like that. So, And it's, it's hard to do this. Just go for it. So come on up. Tell everybody your name, please. Tam. This is Tam, everybody. Let's hear it. All right. You do not look like you can do an evil laugh. <laughs> I'm just going to say that straight out. Um, but that's good, because you can wow us then, which is really cool. So let's hear your best evil laugh. I didn't know you were going to do that when we came up here. I, I know how evil it was that <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. That's awesome. I like it started super evil and then the real laugh came out. Like that. <laughs> All right, I need your help, guys. All right, here we go. And you got to make it real clear for me. So I don't want that thing where it sounds all the same. So let's hear it. Let's hear it over here. How about over here? How about over here? How about here? Oh, uh, you have to do this tough. And right here. How about over here? This is why the audience gets to choose. I was like, I was like, huh, okay, well, close. Okay, maybe here. Okay, this. Oh, no, it's between these. Oh, maybe these three. I don't know. Oh, he's got it. And then I was like, what? So I think you are our winner, everybody. Congratulations. Um, here, come up, come up here. The rest of you, let's hear the applause. Round of applause for everybody. Okay, thank you so much. And the rest of you head back to home. Thank you so much. I, I know the prizes for everybody, but you guys got to participate, and I really appreciate that. Thanks for coming up. Um, so here's what I got today. Because I don't know. I just was going through my stuff to see what I had that was like kind of evil. You're gonna like this. <laughs> That's what you get. That is for you. That is your prize. Congratulations. Let's hear it for her one more time. You're welcome. Right. Watch your step going down there for sure. Um, guys, thank you so much. She okay? Right? I'm like, <laughs> there you go. She just dropped the toy. <laughs> guys, seriously, thank you so much for coming out. It's so boring when I sit and do this by myself. You have no idea. So thanks for being evil with me today. I'll be back out there signing autographs if you haven't come by yet. Please come by and say hi. Uh, tomorrow, do you know what time the panel is tomorrow? Johnny and Johnny Cruz and I are doing a, a panel tomorrow. A little, little Overwatch love. Uh, 2.45. 2.45. So we'll be doing that. Um, yeah, so come by and check that out if you can. Thank you so much again. I really appreciate it. Thank you.